Earlier this evening, we presented the 2020 Ted Albert Award to Helen Reddy, and we would like to acknowledge this year's excellent recipient. Named in memory of the late Ted Albert, former APRA chairman and pioneer entrepreneur and producer, this award, selected by the APRA Board of Directors, acknowledges the lifetime contribution of an outstanding member of the Australian music industry. To present this year's award, please welcome Anne and David Kirkpatrick. I'm honoured and thrilled to be presenting this award tonight to my mother, Joy. <laughs> Growing up, I thought it was pretty normal for my mum to be writing songs, performing in the show, playing a variety of instruments, doing the front of house, the ticket box, booking tours, negotiating record contracts, doing mum stuff, taking care of businesses and much, much more. But of course, particularly in the 1950s and the 60s, it wasn't the norm for women. And it was extraordinary, and she's extraordinary. It always came back to the songs. I can remember my dad Slim saying to David and I many times, leave your mother alone, she's writing and vice versa, that's what it was like at home. Page turning. <laughs> Joy was one of only maybe uh, two women in the country music scene writing their own songs in the 1940s. And she was just hitting her straps in the 50s and 60s. Then in the early 1970s, when Mum wrote Lights on the Hill, which was a huge hit for my dad, Slim, her... <laughs> her, her songwriting just skyrocketed, honestly. Um, it's a huge body of work. Um, so many more hit songs that were recorded by my dad, Slim, and now have been covered by artists from all genres. And most recently, two of her songs were finalists in last year's Tamworth Country Music Awards. My mum, Joy, has inspired many, but particularly I feel that she has inspired generations of young women to pick up an instrument and write their own material, and I could not be prouder. To me, as uh, Joy's son, I'd often, growing up, been completely oblivious to all of the trappings of her and Dad's success. I mean, you know, another award, another hit song, was business as usual in the Kirkpatrick household, really. What I was never oblivious to was the person behind all of that. I've always been immensely impressed by my mother's strength and determination in the face of adversity her childhood experiences with polio, the challenges of maintaining a family life while living on the road for 10 months of the year, circumnavigating Australia, the way that she demanded respect in a male-dominated music industry by just being so bloody good. <laughs> Anyone who's met my mother knows she's not a person to be ignored. I've had the privilege of being sitting in the room at home while Joy worked at the piano, working on a song. I sat there all night listening to her and that song turned out to be the biggest disappointment, one of the great hits of Australian country music. I've been privileged enough for her to write a song about me. So I've had time to think about why is she such a great writer? What is it that's, that I think she is a good writer? And to me, her deep abiding love of literature, particularly Australian literature, and her amazing keen and genuine interest in people and their songs and their, sorry, their stories that she wants to put into song, informs a narrative that she always has put in there. But the music, the melodies, you know, those chord changes, I don't know. Let's just call that genius, because that's what it is. 
I also know that Slim would be extremely proud of the recognition that Joy has received in the most recent years. I know he'd be very proud of this recognition tonight. So on behalf of all my family, I'd like to thank APRA for awarding Joy this honour in recognition of a truly remarkable person and an extraordinary career. Thank you very much. Let's have a look at some of the highlights of Joy's career. My great Joy McKean's contribution to Australian music is unique. She not only shepherded the career of our most significant country music icon, her creative input helped define the genre. The if she were remembered only for writing Lights on the Hill, her husband and client Slim Dusty's 1973 CMA Song of the Year, that achievement alone would make her a living legend. Joy McKean was awarded the very first golden guitar for writing the song, which became an anthemic lodestar for generations of country music fans and anchored Slim's reputation. Joy came from authentic country stock taught by her father to play steel guitar, accordion and piano and to yodel. By the age of 18, she and her sister Heather had their own radio show on 2KY Sydney. Touring as the McKean sisters, Joy and Heather cut a swathe through the regions. Joy catching the eye of the relatively unknown singer Gordon Kirkpatrick, aka Slim Dusty. And I've down they were married in 1951 the same year Joy became an APRA member. In 1954, they launched the Slim Dusty Travelling Show, which carved a billowing dust cloud into history. Joy's working partnership with Slim generated over 100 albums, sold 8 million records in Australia alone, and earned 45 golden guitars. She managed him for 50 years, raising a family amidst constant touring, and earning an Order of Australia medal along the way. Joy's songwriting and management skills elevated the profile of her husband and that of the industry to the status it enjoys today. One of the founders of the Tamworth Country Music Festival and the Country Music Association of Australia, Joy is also a best-selling author and the subject of the 2020 documentary, Slim and I. She's on the Australian role of renown and the recipient of an Australian Women in Music Lifetime Achievement Award. A two-time APRA Music Award nominee, she is chair of the Slim Dusty Foundation and recognised as an enduring stalwart of Australia's musical infrastructure. Joy McKean's legacy is an enduring and dynamic influence on modern Australian country music. Thanks to her vision and tireless energy, we can rest assured that the lights on the hill won't be going out anytime soon. Some miles blessed with joy, some marked with tears. But in harmony we've made it together. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Joy McKean. Here's your frisbee. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. It's wonderful to see all of you. Looking around, of course, I must say it's a bit bigger than the town hall at Camerwheel. But I tell you what, I'm sure the enthusiasm couldn't be any greater. Um, I'm very proud indeed to be honoured with this award. It's a fine one in honour of a fine man who stuck to Australian and really music, uh, Australian music. I do realise that <laughs> so many of you people certainly didn't know what I looked like, knew nothing about me, I suppose. But there's lots of us out there even tonight, that nobody knows what you look like. 
Nobody knows really what you do, but you're there and you're doing it, you're loving it, and you're making this industry live. So. If they've got the stopwatch on me, I better be careful. <laughs> but I just want to say that I have seen so much of music. Believe it or not, I was strumming an instrument before they invented the pedal steel. I discovered that the other day. But it'd been my father had been playing a guitar that somebody said described him as a pedal steel playing. Um, guitarist. It hadn't been invented when Dad was playing it. So there was music like that in our household from the time that my sister Heather and I were born. That's what we, we um, sang together for so many years. I want to say too, make no mistake about it, it's wonderful for me, it's wonderful for my life, and um, despite any problems that my parents might have had, you know, bringing me up when I was a small girl. But over the time, all I must say is thank you to all the people who helped, helped me. I mean, you, you put it this way, Heather and I had our own half, half hour radio show. She was 16, I was 18 when we started running that on 2KY in Sydney. And of course we had a, a nice clear channel, so uh, the Melody Trail show was a half hour show just uh, at 6.30 every Saturday evening. At one stage we had, you know, such a lot of listenings, the, the show was sponsored and um, someone else in the radio uh, station thought that was a really good spot and the girls had built up a good listening audience there, that would be a nice one really that somebody else, a professional, should take over. However, the big wheel at 2KY in those days was a man called John Harper. He was sort of had the influence of, say, John Laws, um, Ray Hadley, Alan Jones, all wrapped up in one. And when he heard about that, he said, he put his foot down and said, no, you don't you leave those ladies right where they are. And of course, he had so much influence. We were there, and I'm telling you, it was just that little shove, that help for us. That was the sort of thing that happens to you when you don't even know about it. So to all the people in this industry, and people in this room, people that I know, and people that I don't know, thank you, because I think you've stood behind uh, all of us in the industry and also I want to thank the women in country who now are definitely singing their songs, singing their songs and doing their very best for country music because I grew up with country music, all different kinds of music, but I particularly love country music. I know all different kinds of people I've met through music and the music industry has given me an opportunity to work in what I love. It doesn't matter if you uh, uh, suffer disabilities or had lots of people tell me that they can kid say to their kids, she did it, you can too. And my parents gave me the chance to do it. So make sure you give every kid the chance to love music, to get out there, to learn it, to enjoy it because it makes a life for you. Thank you very much for the honour that I've been given this evening. I appreciate it just so much.